Hey friends, welcome back to Civil Engineering Mastery. In this video, we are going to continue the series of IS 456-2000 explanation. In the previous three part, we have explained many classes in the IS 456-2000. In this video, we are going to discuss the class number 28, which is Concrete Corbels. Without further delay, let's begin now. Concrete corbels are the reinforced concrete structure which is mainly used to transfer the vertical and horizontal load to the column or walls. This is the corbel. We can also call this as a brackets. This is mainly used to transfer the vertical load which is coming on this and the horizontal load to the column or the supporting wall. These concrete corbels are extensively used in the bridge structure or precast structures. If you see from this image, this is the corbel and here you can see it is double corbel. Both sides the corbel is there. This is the vertical column. This corbel is monolithically casted along with the column. So this is the integrated element. Here the load coming on the corbel is the vertical load and the horizontal load. This corbel transfers this vertical and horizontal load to this column. Before getting into the IS456 classes, let's discuss few basic things about the concrete corbels. See here, this is the corbel. This area is the outer face of the corbel and this is the inner face of the corbel. Here, this is the outer face and this side is the inner face and this is the root of the corbel. This is the bearing plate. So, in this car concrete corbel, we have the effective depth as small d and overall depth as h or we can also name it as capital D. Effective depth is measured from the top of the steel bar till the root of the carbon. This is the root of the carbon. See, as we have discussed here, this is the root of the carbon. So, till the root of the carbon, we have to consider the effective depth. And overall depth will be measured from the top face of the concrete carbon till the root of the carbon. When the load is applied on this concrete carbon, this helps to support the load and also it transmit the load to the vertical structural member that is column or walls. So, this basic details you have to know before getting into the IS456 explanation. Now, let's start with the class number 28.1 from IS456-2000. Here it is mentioned as Carbel is a short cantilever projection which supports the load bearing member. This concrete Carbel is a small cantilever projection. If you take a normal cantilever beam which is having the fixed support at one end and free support at other end, if the load is acting at the free end of the cantilever, we provide the top reinforcement to counteract the moment. And if we draw the shear force diagram for this cantilever beam, it will be constant. Here in point A, it is given as the distance AV between the line of the reaction to supported load and the root of the corbel is less than D. That means this is the applied load. So, the distance between the line of reaction to the supported load and the root of the corbel. So, this is the load from here to the root of the corbel. This is the root of the corbel. Okay. So, this line to the root of the corbel, that distance should be less than D. D is the effective depth. And the next point is the depth at the outer edge of the contact area of the supported load is not less than one half of of the depth at the root of the carbon. This outer face depth should not be less than one half of the depth at the root of the carbon. One half of the depth at the roof, root of the carbon. So, the depth at the outer edge of the contact area of the supported load should not be less than one half of the depth at the root of the carbon. That is 1 by 2 h or 0.5 h. So, this is the face of the support, right? Here it is given the depth of the carbon at the face of the support. That means this h overall depth is determined in accordance with 40.5 Due to this vertically applied load, vertical splitting will occur here. To prevent this vertical splitting, we have to ensure that the outer face depth has to be provided in according to this section. 
so the depth should be more than one half of the depth at the root of the carbon let's look into the next class 28.2.1 in this the assumption is given the concrete and reinforcement may be assumed to act as element of a simple strut and tie system so here the concrete and reinforcement is acting together as a strut and tie system here the reinforcement is act as a tie member to resist the tensile force and the concrete is act as a strut member to resist the compressive force. Here this is the top bar, this is resisting the tensile force whereas the concrete is resisting the compressive force that act as a concrete strut. In point 8 is given as the magnitude of resistance provided to horizontal force should not be less than 1 half of the design vertical load on the carbon. This is the horizontal force. So the resistance provided to this horizontal force that is R resistance should not be less than 1 half of the design vertical force that is 1 by 2 of V or 0.5 V. So this point is and in the next point it is given as compatibility of strain between the strut and tie at the corbel root should be ensured. So the compatibility should be between the strut and tie should be ensured at the root of the corbel. The horizontal link requirement described in 28.2.3 will ensure the satisfactory serviceability performance. Next let us look into the reinforcement anchorage. Here you have to understand that this is the main bar, main reinforcement or tie reinforcement and here are the stirrups, horizontal stirrups and this bar is the bar which is used to tie the horizontal stirrups. Here there are two conditions, first one is welding to a transverse bar of equal strength. That means here in column we have the longitudinal bars, this main bar is used to resist the tensile force. So this has to be welded along with this column longitudinal bar. If that is the case, the bearing area of the load should stop short of the face of the support by a distance equal to the cover of the tie reinforcement. That means here is the bearing, okay, load is acting over here, so this is the bearing. So this distance is equal to the cover of the tie reinforcement. That means for this tie reinforcement, we provide the cover, so this distance is equal to the cover of the tie reinforcement. Another case is bending back the bar to form a loop. Here you can see this bar is bending and we can form a loop kind of like this. So in that case, the bearing area of the load should not project beyond the straight portion of the bars forming the main tension reinforcement. Next one is shear reinforcement. You can see this is the shear reinforcement, horizontal stirrups. These horizontal stirrups are used to prevent the inclined cracks. When the load is applied on this carbel, there will be an inclined cracks. So this horizontal stirrups helps to resist this inclined cracks. The condition given here is the shear reinforcement should be provided in the form of horizontal link distributed in upper two third of the effective depth of the root of the carbon. This is the root of the carbon. The effective depth is from the reinforcement bar till the root of the carbon. So this is the effective depth. So here the condition given is two third of the effective depth of the root of the carbon till that distance we have to provide this horizontal stirrups. That means from here till here the distance is two by third of effective depth. This reinforcement should not be less than one half of the area of the main tension reinforcement and should be adequately anchored. So the area of the shear reinforcement should not be less than the one half of the main reinforcement that is AST. So the stirrup area should not be less than one half of the main reinforcement and it should be adequately anchored. So this bar is provided to tie the horizontal stirrup and it is acting as a anchor for this horizontal stirrups. And in the last class it is given as additional reinforcement connected to the supported member should be provided to transmit this force entirely. So friends let's end up here. I hope this video was useful to you. If you really like the content hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe the channel for more videos. If you have any queries you can post it in the comment box. Your comments are always welcome. Thank you for watching.